There's a Jewish joke that goes like this. Jewish people are like everybody else, but even more so. <laughs> but that's more true of Jesus. He's like all of us, but even more so. We interviewed the chosen Bible scholars, Rabbi Jason Sobel, Dr. Doug Huffman, and Father David Guffey at Chosen Con. We did. <laughs> and in this clip, we're going to talk about why it's so important that the Chosen depicts the Jewishness of Jesus. I think we love the Chosen because he's so relatable, yeah. right? He's so human. What that really means is that we're presenting this first century, second temple Jewish Yeshua. But I think that's what hadn't been done. And that's partly why the Chosen is so successful because it's like, Oh, wow. It's so authentic. This really could have been what he was like. You know, one of the things that I, I think that's often been overlooked is that he is the son of God. He is the son of man. But we also forget that he's Ben David. He's the son of David, which means he, yes, he, he ties himself to the fate of humanity, but he inextricably ties himself for eternity to the fate of Israel as king of the Jews, as a descendant of David, which is, I think, significant that the chosen helps underscore. Matthew starts out, mm -hmm. and it's really all about showing what? The Jewishness of Yeshua. For sure. And showing his heritage, his lineage, his genealogy, which mm -hmm. may seem boring to some, mm -hmm. but this is the authentication of his humanity. Right. And specifically, it's showing 14 generations, 14 generations, mm -hmm. which 14 is equivalent to the name David. You know, each hmm. Hebrew letter has a mm. numeric value. And so it's screaming that he's from this Davidic line, wow. as Rabbi Sobel is saying. I, I love that he's pointing out and using language like it, he was he wasn't coming he didn't come into humanity in like in a generic way, mm -hmm. but in a specific way. Yeah. And for so, all forever. Forever. Like, yeah. I love that. That's the forever part, too. Yeah. Sometimes people stop there. Right. Sorry, I'm totally interrupting you. Just fine. <laughs> it's like, oh, and then now he's not Jewish anymore. Right. Right. Or something like that. It's like, no, he became human mm -hmm. in this specific family, mm -hmm. right? Right. And, and he's that's who he is now forever. And so when he took on flesh, that's amazing. That's incredible. And yet there's more. Right. Right. He took on Jewish flesh right. and he, he was a part of a family mm -hmm. and he was being covenantally faithful and then he's going to be a blessing for the nations i'm arguing and i think it's clear like that's why we love the chosen right it's that relatableness of his jewishness i think of three principles when i talk with people about the chosen authenticity they're trying to tell the story of jesus as we have it written for us in the new testament plausibility uh, when you move from a written text to a visual, audio-visual medium, it, there's blanks that have to be filled in. Sure. We don't know what color of robe Jesus wore, but he's got to wear one in the show. The blue sash. The blue sash. The blue sash. The blue sash. Right? Oh. So, so let's have it be a plausible yes. color for the first century Jewish world. It's not going to have paisleys and stripes on it. It's not going to be polyester. Or, you know, obviously Glad. authenticity, plausibility for the things that we don't know. And then that third principle, this relatability. We've become a little too far distant from our reading of the Bible. And we, we forget that these are real people. And the Chosen's trying to bring the reality a little closer so that we can all relate to that story a little better. I had a spiritual director who used to tell us that you can't be a Christian, a believer in theory. It always has to be rooted in a real experience of the time and place that you are. Going back to something that Rabbi Solo said, I don't know that we've always really appreciated the, the incarnation, mm -hmm. that God who's transcendent became very specific, yeah, mm -hmm. very imminent mm -hmm. to people. And Good. The Chosen just reminds us of the ways that happened the first time and in, the, in all the ways that Dr. Hubman talked about. But I think it's also a reminder, too, that if we are to encounter Christ, it's not just in the theories that we know and the theology that we know, but in the very specific, concrete encounters that we have with Christ and Christ, and the, and Christ people that will really come to know the real Jesus. And the, the, the Chosen's really helped so many of us envision what that would look like that's so good. Mm -hmm. uh, I love how he's emphasizing his carnational imminence. Mm. <laughs> like I would describe myself uh, and kind of like how I understand scripture as a 
covenantal relationalist. Mm. It's all about covenantal relationship to God For sure. and to others. Yep. And so that's really what they're showing and saying like at the mm-hmm. end of the day it has to be relatable yeah why because the whole story of scripture the whole story of humanity the gospel story is it's right. all about knowing him and knowing others it's all about loving god loving others i would uh, offer you this challenging thought um jesus christ is more human than any of the rest of us this is fun okay unpack that come on (laughs) it always makes me wince when somebody says ah to sin is to be human Hmm. oh no 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 to (sighs) sin is anti-human adam and eve were human before they sinned and sin went against their relationship with god as human beings jesus is fully human and fully God, but more fully human than the rest of us because his humanity is unspoiled by sin, whereas the rest of ours is. Imagine this, we had a big barrel of apples here, and every apple I took a bite out of had a worm in it. Oh, I guess apples have worms. Hmm. Oh, this apple has no worm, it must not be a real apple then. Throw it away. No, no, that's the best apple. That's That's the real apple. That's Jesus. He's the real apple, unspoiled by sin. Yeah, I just got saved. I just got saved. I just got saved. Nice. That is so good. So beautiful. I love that. Mm -hmm. He's the most human. He's more human than we are. Right. Why? Because it's unspoiled. He's unspoiled by sin. It Mm. also just affirms our humanity Mm -hmm. in that sense. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I feel like, yeah. And, And also like, we can do this. Yeah, yeah. With him, mm-hmm. we can be righteous. Yeah, right. He he can he will and is and I can testify and mm-hmm. you can testify mm-hmm. and I can testify for you. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> he's helping us be more righteous. Yes. Yes. He's, and I'll say it differently. He's helping us be more human. Yeah. Right. Oh, That's man. so good. I really like that. I love what he said that 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 sin is anti-human. I think that's why that 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 statement hits so hard is because like oh my gosh right i was created for relationship yeah not for sin and temptation sometimes people will um tolerate sin right and they'll say well everybody's gonna get into sexual sin for example Mm -hmm. we'll allow it a little bit no that's not what he's arguing here he's actually saying that the goal is perfection the goal is no sin. Right. If you, if you set the bar here, mm-hmm. you're really going to sin. Right. So the goal has to be up here. It yeah. has to be holiness, righteousness. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah, if you happen to fall short, condemnation-free zone. Yeah. Confess, repent, turn back to him. Yeah. He will empower you to not do that anymore. Restore relationship. Exactly. Yeah. It's possible. And we just got saved. Yeah. <laughs> He's the only 200% person. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Right. I like that. Can I say that? Yeah, I He's the only 100% human, 100% divine. And I, but I think there's a misconception 200%. that I think it's important as you say that to underscore. And I love working with both of you because you have such amazing insights. When we read passages like he was tested in every way, like, Well, it must have been easy for him. See, actually, it's the opposite. Right. There's a Jewish joke. It goes like this. It's like, Jewish people are like everybody else, but even more so. (laughs) (laughs) But that's more true of Jesus. He's like all of us, but even more so. Mm -hmm. So what that means is he felt pain more deeply because he wasn't fallen. Mm -hmm. He felt things on a level that we can't even begin to understand. Mm -hmm. And so when he was tested or when he was rejected, because his spiritually and emotionally, he wasn't fallen, it was deeper than what we could ever understand, which is something that I think is so beautiful. Again, that's a big part of the sacrifice of the incarnation. Yeah. If you like our videos, you should. (laughs) Please make a donation and help us spread a biblical messianic worldview. If you enjoyed this video and you want to watch the whole interview, click here. Did you do it? That's exactly what your coach is trying to say. Mm. Access the Lord for 20% (laughs) 
beyond just humanity. You'll be able to run like an eagle. I don't think I don't think eagles run really well. <laughs>